Hello and welcome to A Homespun House. My name is Molly and thank you so much for taking time out of your day to to join me. Um, it's funny, sometimes when I sit here and podcast I think, I wonder what people are doing when they're watching. Are they knitting? Are they cooking? Are they cleaning? Um, am I something that people are watching? actually watching or am I kind of background just for company um, because I totally understand as a person who works at home and it is quite quiet um, sometimes it's nice to just have a podcast on in the background that's what's really nice about audio podcasts um, or audiobooks is while you're doing stuff there's kind of always someone chatting with you a little or um, somebody around I also like quiet time too, time too, but I definitely really enjoy listening to a podcast or um, an audiobook. I am listening to Harry Potter and The Prisoner of Azkaban currently. Um, loving it. I am so much enjoying listening to the audiobook. I've listened to them all thousands of times and um, I'm just having a lot of fun dying up my um, Harry Potter Yarn Club. I'm doing a um, collaboration with Sucre Sucre Miniatures. I guess I'll talk about this right now. So we did a June, July, August collaboration and how it worked is um, I designed the charms and um, Chelsea from Sucre Sucre Miniatures made them for me and um, I'm dying yarn to, to kind of go with the charms. So I'm sure everyone has received their June installment and so the first installment is called Dobby Tries to Help. And um, this is from the Chamber of Secrets. And this is when Dobby comes and pays a visit to Harry and he um, basically tries to prevent him from going to Hogwarts and he throws a cake on um, Vernon and Petunia's guest's head. And I took the image from the movie of the cake and this is how it looks. And this is actually an idea that Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast had. When I first started my, my first installation of the Harry Potter Club, I think that was in January, I wasn't having custom made charms for the Harry Potter Club. And I was just having a conversation with Danny and I was like, oh, I, if you have any ideas, definitely let me know. And she said it would be so awesome to make a skein of yarn called Dobby Tries to Help and have it be based off of the cake, you know, from the film. And so when I decided to do this collaboration with Sucre Sucre, I thought I'm going to have that cake made because it was just such a wonderful idea. So Danny definitely, I don't think this, this skein or the skein and charm would have come together if it hadn't been for Danny of the Little Bobbins podcast. Um, which you should definitely check out. So fantastic. I know a lot of you watch Danny already, but... So that's the first installation. The second installation actually goes out tomorrow. Um, I'm really excited about that. So I will share that with you on next week's podcast. So Chelsea and I are um, actually collaborating on another club, and that is the Tim Burton Yarn and Charm Club. So Chelsea is in the middle of making all of the charms that I have designed for that, and the first installation will go out in October and then November and December and I feel like those three months couldn't be more perfect for a Ch Tim Burton charm club and yarn club of course so there are still some spots opened um, I don't know if any of these yarns that I'm doing with Sucre Sucre miniatures are yarns that I will dye again now it's definitely possible that they could be dyed again but um, for the moment Definitely the Harry Potter one, I don't think it's going to be to be dyed again. So if you want to be a member of the club, definitely, definitely join. I do have monthly clubs, and those are just a sock yarn club. And those are really, really nice because it's a skein of sock yarn, and you're just committing to one month. So it's not a three-month membership. I know not everybody has the funds for that. So if you do want to do a, a sock club membership, they're definitely a lot of fun and I already have September's dyed so that will probably be going out pretty early in September 
Um, memberships are open now, so if you want to join, definitely do so. And those are yarns that will never be dyed again. This is definitely just one of a kind's gains. So I guess we can talk about the, the pullover that I have on right now. This has not been blocked yet. It definitely needs some blocking, especially right around here. Um, but this is my, I'm calling it my barley pullover because I've knitted in my a homespun house yarn in my barley colorway. This is a DK 19 micron non superwash merino. Um, and I adore this cardigan so much. So I don't even remember when I cast this on. I just wanted a really, really versatile cardigan that I could wear with anything. And um, I love this colorway so much. I wear a lot of grays. Now, I actually probably wouldn't uh, pair this color with black. Um, it could look all right, but I definitely like more of a yellow and gray paired together. So today I have it on with um, this collared sleeveless shirt. And then I have a, just a gray kind of um, knit dress. Um, kind of a jersey style knit dress and then I just have on some some great tights so um, it's really nice I finished it yesterday and I put it on immediately and Robert Robert was pretty pretty excited about it but I definitely agree that it needs to be blocked here um, but I love it the arms are the perfect length for me I don't like really really long arms when I'm standing they go just to my wrists um, I don't like my hands being covered um, and yeah, it just hits right above my waist and it's perfect. I'm already planning on making another cardigan. There's a cardigan called the Siri cardigan. And I love this cardigan so much. I cannot remember the designer's name, but it's beautiful. When we had our yarn crawl with um, Verena and Hanalisa, it was, oh my God. Um, the dyer behind Hey Mama Wolf Yarns was wearing this cardigan, knit in her yarn, and it was absolutely stunning. I think Hannah Lisa actually bought some Hey Mama Wolf yarn specifically to knit this cardigan in. So I'm kind of thinking about knitting that cardigan. Um, it calls for a DK weight, and I have some sweater quantities of DK weight. I have more barley, I have a Fjordbird, I'm a bird, I have... Berlin Sunrise and Berlin Sunset. I don't have those listed in the shop right now, but I'll probably do that after I record. But I don't think I would use um, those for my personal pullover. I think I would like to knit it in a tonal again. I just want these to be pullovers. Or that's a cardigan, sorry. Um, I just want it to be something that I can wear with everything. And I think actually all of those could honestly be ones that you could wear with almost anything. But I haven't decided for sure what color I'm going to knit that with, if I do. And then there's another um, pattern that just came out, I think today, by Hannah Fettig, and it's called Wool Trip Crew Neck. And this is just a really nice um, pullover, and it's a raglan style. Um, I kind of would like to use somebody else's pattern this time. This time I knit my own, and I feel like... Um, I do have a little bit too much fabric up here, which is totally fine. You know, it's a comfy pullover for wearing around the house, and I would definitely wear this out as well. But I want something that's a little bit more, um, just I want something that's a little bit different. I feel like it's too long down here, and it's just too, too baggy. I wanted something that was a little bit more fitting. So I'm going to go and try and knit the wool trip crew neck by Hannah Fettig. And I've had this yarn forever. For those of you who have been watching the podcast, you've probably seen this yarn so many times with so many different ideas of what it wants to become. Um, but the Wool Trip Crew Neck calls for a worsted weight yarn, and that's exactly what this is. And this is some yarn that my grandma, Sue, gave me quite a while ago. And um, I definitely have enough of it. I think I have five skeins of this. And this sweater, by the way, took three. Three skeins of DK weight yarn. Um, and I used probably five grams of a fourth skein. So um, I did knit the size hmm, 34. I think this is definitely, I would say, a size 34. I mean, it's my own pattern, so you can't really say, but 
I would definitely say it's a 34 because it has a little bit of um, positive ease there. Anyway, so that is what I'm thinking for this yarn. I am desperately wanting to cast on another sweater. I had so much fun knitting this one that I'm just really craving another one. And I think I want it to be a pullover. I definitely lately have been going for pullovers a lot more than cardigans, although now that I say that, I do wear my featherweight out of my Vol & Vine yarns all the time. Um, all the time. So I have finished another object and I haven't woven in any of the ends on here yet. You can see just strings kind of hanging all around. And this is my Party on My Needles shawl by Hohi Locatelli. And this shawl, I don't know the last time that I have enjoyed knitting a shawl so much. And I feel like that says a lot because this shawl is massive. I probably used 250 grams of yarn to knit this shawl. Um, so it's quite a hefty one. It's one that definitely will wrap and wrap and wrap. And this is a narrow crescent shaped shawl. So I'm going to show you how long this is. So this is the edge and I did a Pico bind off. I just very, very, very lightly blocked it. I knit this in singles yarn, in a homespun house yarn. I knit it in, um, so the gray is ash and that is a repeatable colorway. And then the variegated one is Let Them Eat Cake and that was one of my sock clubs. And as I said, that is not a repeatable colorway. So if you like it, I'm totally sorry. I will never, ever, ever be dyeing it again. Um, so I guess I'm, like I said, I'm gonna go along and show you how how long it is because it's huge. But so beautiful. I wore this actually over my shoulders. I really like wearing shawls um, over my shoulders and it, it goes all the way down to my feet almost, um, which I like. And um, I love it. It was so much fun to knit. As I mentioned last time, I never got bored with the feather and fan, all of the garter stitch, and just the change up in colors, the change up in pattern. It is just a really, really nice fun knit. Now, I definitely say, as I mentioned last time, put stitch markers in. Please don't um, make the mistake I did and not, and... Um, mess up a billion times because it's definitely not worth it and even though I made so many mistakes um, I still had a lot of fun knitting it especially after I put my stitch markers in so Holy Locatelli has so many beautiful patterns and I feel like she just keeps coming out with new ones over and over and over it's her job so <laughs> it's good that she does that but um, I love them. I have another one of her shawl patterns that I have not seen. It's definitely not a, uh, a widely knit pattern, but I'm intrigued to knit it. It is a short row pattern, so I don't know how much you have to pay attention to the rows. Oh, I wish I could remember what it's called. Um, but I have to take a look at the pattern to see if it's one that requires a lot of attention and brain power because, um, I don't, I don't, I'm not really at that place in my life right now that I can be knitting something that, you know, requires a lot of thought. So there are some strings hanging out of here. That's just where I joined my yarn and I have to, um, sew it in. So this shawl is gorgeous. I love it. I am very curious to see how um, much I will wear it once it gets a little bit chillier. You know, I could even wear it outside today. I think it's 10 degrees this morning, which is just so weird. I mean, it's August, which is normally our warmest month here in Berlin. And I feel like it's one of the colder months this summer. <laughs> so that's just strange. But, um, but yeah, so one shawl goes off the needles. Another one goes on. 
and I had mentioned last podcast, I kept saying over and over, I want to knit the Brioche Alicious shawl. However, I was saying the wrong name the entire time. The shawl that I was talking about that Danny and I plan on knitting is called the Brioche Luscious shawl. And it's a variation, a little bit more fancy version of the Drea Renee Knits, I think her name is Andrea Mal Malry shawl. However, I have two skeins of beautiful yarn from Infinite Twist, and this is a camel yarn of hers. And um, she dyes such beautiful yarn on such insane bases. Like the yarn that the yarns that I have received from her are unlike any that I have purchased or seen anywhere ever. So I have just a little bit knit on this, and this is just her Maori. Maori, that's her last name. This is her Marley shawl. So. Um, the yarn didn't come with tags, which kind of stinks, because I would love to tell you what the colorways are, or even the name of this yarn, because I can't remember what the name of the yarn is. Um, chapstick in a bag, may as well put it on. But it's really, really beautiful. So, um, the only time I have ever knit brioche is when I was knitting um, Stephen West's exploration station for my husband Robert and I knit that for him for Christmas last year and that was a really really fun knit and Robert wears it all the time it's kind of the only shawl that he wears now and uh, that was the only time I ever knit it and I think there's just a BRKYO BRK brioche knit yarn over brioche knit in that shawl and in this one there are quite a few different increases because it is a crescent, or no, this is a, a triangular shaped shawl. So um, my mind had a little bit of trouble wrapping, you know, around the idea, but I figured it out very, very quickly because I have already knit a brioche shawl, and I feel like brioche is very, very intuitive. Um, I think it seems a lot more complicated than it is. I could kind of see how you could be... Um, could have a hard time with it, but it's really very easy. So this is just a plain, you know, brioche shawl. And then at the bottom, there's a garter stitch um, edging. And I'm having a lot of fun with it. Like I said, I haven't knit that many rows. Um, I wondered at the beginning if I was knitting the wrong needle size. I'm using a 3.5, which is what the pattern calls for. Um, and this is a fingering weight yarn, but, um, it definitely plumps out quite large. So I wonder if I could have gone up a needle size. I still could change my mind. I haven't knit that much on it. Um, it doesn't feel like it's really tight or anything. I just wonder if once it washes, it will expand a lot in size. And I have a really, my cute little teacup progress keeper on there. Well, it's hanging from the back so you can't really see it. But I'm knitting these out of my Knit Pro Carbons needles. I haven't knit with these in quite a while. Um, and they were def they were my first interchangeable needle set, and I absolutely loved them. I think I've been using Carbons for four years now, I would definitely say, four years. Um, and I really love them. I like the Knit Pro Rosewood needles too. I would say they're definitely a tie for my favorite needle, the Knit Pro um, Carbons and the um, the Rosewood Needles. Rosewood Needles are so fantastic. If you haven't given them a try, definitely do. I think that Knit Pro only offers them as, um, as an inter interchangeable needle set though, so that is kind of a bummer. One thing I want to mention, speaking of interchangeable needle sets, is September is my birthday month, and I am going to be doing some really, really fun giveaways for my birthday. So I will be releasing some of my favorite things, and this will be a yearly thing that I'm doing um, for the month of my birthday, and 
yeah, so definitely stay tuned. Those will be through Instagram, probably mostly through Instagram. I'll be doing um, my favorite things. So um, I'm a underscore homespun underscore house on Instagram if you want to check it out and follow me and um, stay tuned for some of my favorite things on Instagram. There might just be an interchangeable needle set in there. Um, so something else that I've been working on are my metamorphosis socks. I finished one of these here it is I did a little bit longer cuff on these ones this time I still have to weave in the ends I am starting to kick myself for not weaving in my ends I should probably grab a needle right now and as I talk to you weave in the ends on this one because I am never weaving in my ends and I'm constantly wanting to wear my new socks and I seriously just wear them without the ends woven in, which can be irritating when you have this hanging out the end of your of your sock. So weaving in the ends, I shall. Um, I have been wearing my socks from Andre Sue Knits. I knit um, some socks out of her sock blank with the foxes on it, and those have the ends hanging out, and I still wear them constantly. However, the sock blank that she sent is very, very soft, but the socks have softened up quite a bit. Um, and they are so, so, so cozy to wear. Um, so yeah, after I finish these socks, I am going to work on a really fun sock design idea that I have. Um, I don't even know if you guys can remember, but I had a shawl called the Alpine Shawl that I showed you months and months ago. I had people test knit it, um, and I haven't released the pattern yet. So um, I'm working on a second sample of that, and the pattern should be out sometime um, in early September, or even at the end of this month. We'll just kind of see what, what I can make time for. So. Um, yeah, I finished one of these. I just got the that end woven in. Now I have to do the top, but I won't do that right now. And I, where is my bag? I cast on for the second one. And I cast on for this while I was at the Berlin Yarn Crawl. So here I have the cuff done. Well, not all of the cuff, but I have the ribbing done on the cuff. And then I have to do just a little bit more. This is a homespun house yarn in my metamorphosis colorway. I don't think there's any of this in the shop. There isn't any of this in the shop at the moment, but there will be more of this in the shop next week. Um, and I'm loving knitting it. So much fun. So um, I'm using Addy Turbos, sent to me by the lovely Tracy and Jody of the Grocery Girls podcast. Grocery Girls. And I love them so, so much. I have started watching the Grocery Girls from the beginning again. I love their podcast so much. They are so wonderful. I watch them. I laugh with them hilariously. Oh, they are... They're wonderful. They are definitely, definitely one of my favorite podcasts. They're podcasts that I need to watch as soon as they come out. And sometimes I'll even watch the most recent podcast twice just because they're so much fun. Their podcasts can be a bit longer, um, but I love that with theirs. I, I never get bored, ever. So the socks are a lot of fun. Like I said, I will be working on a sock pattern, which I'm so excited about. Um, the socks are just too much fun to knit. Um, so I have um, been dying a ton of fun yarn colorways. So um, this is one that I'm really excited about. This is called Heart Shaped Box. And this is a tonal grayish purple. And it has navy, blue, yellow, ochre, pink, um, a teeny, teeny bit of purple, purple, but it is a highly speckled skein of yarn. I adore this colorway. I'm really, really excited about it. So this is Heart Shaped Box. And this is my new Halloween colorway called Goblins. 
and um, I love it. Another very, very speckled yarn. Just really pretty. I'm excited about this one. People will have fun knitting socks or squares into their cozy memories, blankets, even a fun, I think it would look gorgeous as a shawl as well. A brio shawl would be fantastic. Um, I do have some um, digital bath in the shop. I have blush on soft sock and I have it on Stellina. It's a gold Stellina. I have a lot of um, tonals in the shop, but two new ones that I'm adding today are Peony and here is Fig. Let me just grab whatever I have over here. I have Birthday Cake on Jeunesse Fingering. Um, I have some of your bird, I'm a bird on Tweed and a lot of other ones. Um, but there will be a lot of, of um, yarn going into the shop. And I have kits, you guys. I have a bunch of kits that I will be listing up in the shop. So these are going to be really, really fun. I have been having a lot of people ask me if I can do some smaller bags because for quite a while I've just been doing larger bags and I've had, as I said, a lot of people asking me if I can do some sock size bags. So, hmm. Do I have a cake of yarn? Yeah, let me grab one. So I decided... Oh no, that one is attached to something. Hmm. I guess I can grab my own sock cake. Because it has gotten quite fat. Um, so I decided that I would make a new size, my favorite sort of a size, for a, a sock bag. So this is one of the kits that will be in there and the kit, so this is just a super cute little kitty fabric and it just has this pretty um, ribbon trim. And inside are super sweet birds. I usually don't do a contrast of fabric on the inside. I normally do a linen, but I wanted to do some extra fun ones for the smaller size bags. I feel like they're small enough that they don't really need um, the extra um, steadiness. So, so there is that one. And these will have um, a skein of sock yarn and then they'll have a 20 gram skein for heels, cuffs, and toes, which I'm excited about. So there will be six of all of these bags. So here is this beautiful bird one. Then on the inside of this, I have put the kittens. So that's just kind of a reverse one. And then I just think this is really nice to just have a handle and you can kind of knit as you walk. So there are those really sweet little bird ones. I think they're really pretty. And then I have um, this really fun one. So here's the front. There will always be a girl on the front, not necessarily one on the back. If so, she'll be, um, you know, smaller. And then on the inside of this, I have this really beautiful metallic floral print. Um, and like, like I said, I'll show you how, how everything fits in here. So... So there it is with the skein of yarn inside. Don't even know if you could see that. And then with the knitting in. So there is a bit of space, works pretty well. And I just feel like it's a nice size. You don't always want a massive, um, and then here's my finished sock. So you don't always want a massive sock bag, you know, progress bag for your sock. So that works perfect, it fits perfect. Um, and the trimming will always be somewhere different just depending upon where the girl is. I didn't want to cover her up and this is some gorgeous vintage um, trimming that I got from my grandma Sue. So I thought it would look really really pretty to use it on those bags. And I always put a house zipper pull or progress keeper on my bags for a homespun house and you can use it as a progress keeper if you'd like. So. Um, I will just slowly be doing kits um, 
in the next couple of weeks whenever I have time. I've kind of found a really, really good balance to still keep dyeing the amount of yarn that I've been dyeing and be sewing project bags. Um, so I'm hoping to kind of, you know, be able to offer kits to those of you who, who do want them. And right now I'm having so much fun um, making the sock bag. So I will definitely have quite a bit of those coming up here and there uh, in the shop. So if you'd like one, um, definitely look for it today, tomorrow, over the weekend. I will be listing all of those, those bags today and over the weekend. So, um, so yeah, really exciting. I'm having so much fun sewing those. Um, so really exciting news. My parents are coming to visit us in October and we cannot wait. We are so excited. Elodie is really excited. Two months is quite a long time for a, a kid to wait but she's definitely excited. Um, we're hoping that we could possibly be in a house by then. Um, our plans on a house have changed so much. First we planned on building and then we were still kind of, you know, we, we reserved our land and then um, Robert was still kind of looking at houses and we ended up finding our seriously our dream home it is so amazing it is a very modern swedish designed home and it is just gorgeous there are 4000 square meters of land and oh, it's it is so beautiful um the house where it is located um so we have put an offer in on this house and we will actually find out tomorrow on Friday if we can have it or not. And um, if we don't, we will be so bummed. Like I cannot even prepare myself enough for how sad I honestly will be if we don't um, get the house. If we don't get it, that means that we will have to wait Two more years until we can even build or live in a house. Um, just because the house buying laws here are very, very, very different than in America. Um, very different. So um, that will just be really, really sad because I do not want to live in a flat anymore. I desperately want a house for my family and my kids. And I just would like to get out of Berlin. Ruby will be starting Kita um, in about a year, and Elodie will be starting school when she's seven years old. Here in Germany, you start um, like an elementary school when you are six, seven, depending upon the age cutoff. And Elodie starts at seven. And I want her now to be going to the Kita and school that she will be going to. Um, I feel like it's just really important. And I don't want her to change schools three times before she even starts school. I feel like that would just be not so great. So everybody, please, please be sending amazing positive thoughts our way tonight. Because today and tomorrow morning is when, you know, all of the, all of the thoughts from the bank will be happening. So, um... We want this so bad, so bad. Um, uh, and, and if we got it, we could move in there pretty quickly. And it is a dream. It is a dream. It is my dream home. I cannot think of anything more perfect. I'm so excited about it. So um, please, 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 please send us your thoughts. Danny told me I should get some goats. <laughs> for the house, um, but that would definitely wait. I would ha definitely have to wait until my girls get bigger. Adody wants a cat right away. I need to stop dreaming though. I'm already dreaming and those dreams make it really, really hard if there were to be a letdown. Um, so um, it's really exciting. It could possibly be very, very, very exciting. I will be, you guys will probably all hear me screaming with excitement all the way in America, Canada, Sweden, anywhere, wherever you are, Australia, um, if we do get the, the home. 
So, um, it's a crazy, crazy week for us, filled with, you know, a lot of emotions. Um, but yeah, tomorrow couldn't come soon enough, kind of. Um, oh, I hope that you guys have a really wonderful week. I enjoyed talking with you guys, um, and I hope that soon I'll be able to share with you guys our new home. I really, really hope that um, will be will be so fun to be able to film outside. And here I am dreaming again. I'll see you guys later. Bye.